Hello, everyone. Uh, let's give um, two more minutes for food together and we'll get started. Hey, let's just, just let you know it's the December 4th, right? So we got stuff going into November 27th. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because we mm -hmm. skipped. Uh, I was, huh, am I sharing my screen? <laughs> no, I wasn't sharing my screen yet, but I see. Okay. Yeah, I see where you got this. Thank you, uh, Tim. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, because November 27 was skipped. Okay, well, three minutes in. I don't know exactly. Uh... Hi, Lexi. Oh, hey, Sana. Oh, great, you're here. Uh, I was, I was actually. I'm sorry, guys. Your... I'm late. Kashik to be on the call. No, no, no worries. Hi, everyone. Um, Alexi, are we going to get started, or we are waiting for someone? No, I was waiting uh, rather for you and Kashik, but if you're there and you believe we can get started, then uh, I'm good as well. Um, I think we can get started. I, I was already wait, um, running late joining the meeting. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Alexi, on the vice chair um, elections. I'm very happy to see you there, and um, we're excited to work together. Um, we have to uh, follow up on a couple of action items. Anybody else? It's wishing congratulations to Alexi. Thank you, Sana. Thank you. Now, I also look forward to working with everybody here on the call and, and the, the whole SIG as a whole. I also really want to work with uh, Suri, who, who was, you know, putting his name as well as vice chair. Uh, I know Tal speak uh, of some of the methodologies Suri has, and I really want to make sure we can benefit from his experience as well. So. Um, I will reach out and make sure that we can have him engaged as well. Absolutely. That would be perfect. And uh, I, I'm also still relying on Kaushik and his feedback in a lot of things. Some of the things that we have started this year uh, around how we are keeping our notes and how we're keeping our action items, I think Kaushik started the document and it's still valuable to get his feedback into a lot of things that we are, we are doing. So that's a good call, Alexi. Uh, let's continue working um, like that. And um, uh, let's pick up our notes from the last uh, meeting. Uh, Alexi, I remember that you you were um, hosting the last meeting, so if you don't mind sharing the notes. Uh, I was thinking first we go through the action items that are actually uh, pending on us and some of the other community members, and then we go into the working group updates. Does it look right to you, Alexi? Yeah, there are a couple of things um, <clears throat> really that we need to cover. and. Uh... A lot of action item, and so, I mean, between now and last time we met with the whole group, I can't say we necessarily took any um, step to, well, at least on the SIG one, you know, chair, vice chair, to take some uh, action on the process improvement bucket. But um, this is an area where I hope we can have a little bit of time to discuss towards the end. Absolutely, that sounds perfect. Do you want me to run with this, uh, Sana? Yeah, let's run with this and let's reassign the action owners or the time update the time so that it's reflective of this meeting um, outcome. All right, so um, hopefully folks, you can see my screen. And I'm just gonna put the chat if there is anything. So um, yeah, <laughs> ETA November 20, I guess we're past the timeline, but, um, and, and Sana, it's good we, we have you on the call. So, um, <clears throat> Write a process document for the nephew release planning process across the six. Um, so la last time we met, I wasn't exactly sure what this was about and who was the owner for this. It wasn't assigned, and and what exactly do we meant by by this sentence? Um, yeah. It's not very clear will, to me. So 
I will explain the background to you, Alexi. So basically, um, there was a meeting like this. We were brainstorming on ideas. Um, how should the working groups produce uh, next release user stories? And, and you know, we discussed a template that was given by um, uh, um, Balaji, and we reviewed that. So things like that, we wanted to put in a structure. So all working groups uh, create their user stories. Uh, we build uh, SIG architecture, SIG automation group together. Uh, for the Rx planning group, which is the next release planning group from two to three weeks before the next release is um, requirements um, um, time. So this is a discussion that still has to happen. On a high level, we have some good ideas. We need to just document them. And you put the right action owners in front of it. We have to work with Sudhi. We have to work with Kaushik. Anybody else from the community who's interested in helping out laying this document uh, should be a quick session where we produce a document and then we um, keep it as reference for ourselves and how we are planning every release, um, gathering stories and, and, and generating them for the next release <coughs> prep work. Yeah, no, that sounds good. And that's part of the process improvement also we highlighted. So Sana, I'm going to put you and myself as the owner of this and, and I can get started between now and next week to put something together and that's, then we'll, we'll leave it to the community question. for, for review. So, so that way we make progress here and, um, and, and, and we can track it. Okay. Um, November 28th, so that's due as well. Uh, Sana Cash, if high level scope for UX, uh, working group four leads uh, can take the ownership of those goals. Uh, so last time we did discuss um, quite a bit actually on this uh, item. I don't know if we have um, Sandy or Bernard in the call, but we're I think some work was being done here to try to converge. Um, I don't know if we have Sandeep on the call or Bernard on the call. Yeah, yeah, Sandeep here. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, uh, we I worked with Bernard and, and got a lot of uh, comments on that, uh, the user requirement which I have shared. And uh, today I just sent uh, the I think four user stories which I thought can be part of the R3. and. We can discuss on that, and I've shared in the link down. I think somewhere UX four. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so so I think this is good then. So we did we we, we have converged. And we have the user stories. So now it's a, and I know it's here. So it's a matter of just reviewing them. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sandeep. Thank you. Um, and the other one that is due for uh. I think that's just an oversight for me. It was December 4th from Tal and Bernard and others document the current state of modeling work, preferably on the nephew preferably wiki, as we the said. Wiki, as we said. Um, so um, I don't know if so that, I don't know if has, that been done. has been done. Um, it has not been done. People are waiting on me. Uh, but yeah, I'm aware of the date and, and I, I believe it'll be done by, uh, by tomorrow for the meeting. So I'm working on it today. I'm just not done. Um, okay, so okay. Yeah. perfect. So, perfect. Okay. Uh, Alexi, I'm hearing you twice. I'm um, hearing you twice. Um, and myself as well. I don't know if it's just my problem or someone else's too. I think it's me. I'll mute when I'm not talking. Okay. Okay, so that's great. Thank you, Tal. And um, between now and then, if there is anything I can help with, just, just let me know. But But it's great to hear we're... And of course, I assume this is not something completely fleshed out. This is the initial uh, work, right, from which we can iterate. So thank you, Tal. Um, OK, so let's uh, let's jump into the working group updates. Uh, uh, Alexi, one more. Uh, before we jump into the working group updates, there are a few more action items that I want to bring here so that we don't miss tracking them, especially for you and I to uh, do the housekeeping work effectively. Um, I remember I spoke to the community that I do want to update the time for the SIG architecture meetings. I was waiting for the election results so that I could work with, um, uh, with the right stakeholder to, to sit together and find the new time slot. So that's one action item on you and me. Uh, we'll work through that this week um, if, uh, to find the, the right time slots that work for your time zone, my time zone, and the rest of the community members has to be moved from Monday to another day. Uh, and then there is one more meeting invite that I was supposed to schedule, which is missed in this list as the uh, working group architecture. 
uh, meetings have to be scheduled and um, the same action item uh, we'll have to work on that i was i had volunteered to start leading the group discussions but i was just waiting for this meeting to set up so that i can find another alternate time for that meeting so that also has to go into this bucket of things okay um uh Perfect. So uh, let's get a poll maybe for this one um, okay. to, to identify. I'm just going to change it. We, we can make this a poll. Uh, let, let's sync you and I, and then let's make a poll. OK, perfect. Uh, and then for uh, working group one, um, well, likewise, um, we'll, let's make a poll. We'll get the volunteers, additional volunteers. So additional volunteers are still welcome to put their names on the document uh, where the working group's discussion is happening. Uh, I'll resend the link again on the Slack channel. Uh, if you can put your names there, we'll then create a poll and gather your feedback in making sure that we find a time that works for most of the audience of this group. Okay. And we have quite a good list here already. So if you want to be yes. part of the poll, uh, folks, for working group one, please put your name here. And, um, and and we'll get that going. Awesome. Okay, thank you uh, for, so, so I guess we addressed also the working group one updates. Nothing started really at this point. That's, that's right. Okay, great. Um, so the working group two, um, Tim, if you want to provide us with a quick update. Yeah, so as we discussed, uh, we do have within uh, the ORAN uh, integration, we do have completed the uh, uh, the deployment architecture that we're going to have for uh, release three, and we have a link to that uh, there. Um, okay, I don't have a link there, but there's a link there. <laughs> if you go to the o if you go to the working group too, you see the deployment architecture. It's in the slide deck that's there. Um, and then we also have the, the use cases and the objectives that we're going to do for release three. Um, yeah, so that's the deployment architecture. Uh, and, I just want to, do, do you want to yeah, come on it sure. two minute, for two minutes? Yeah, sure. So this is the release three deployment architecture. There's a couple things. Uh, if you see, uh, we have both uh, in ORAM, we have both uh, NEPIO enabled uh, uh, services in the SMO, and we've got some NEPIO enabled services that would be part of what um, ORAN considers to be the O cloud in order to uh, deploy uh, certain network ORAN network functions, which is on the right hand side. And so uh, this is where we think are the, the, the NEPIO touch points are uh, necessarily uh, to do the deployment. So that's for release three. There's also two other deployment types that we're also going to investigate in release three, and that's in slide four and slide five. They're different variations of, of what we would consider to be the clustering uh, deployments. Uh, and so we want to look at these other ones as well because we think they might have some, um, you know, well, they're different variations, but the one in, mm -hmm. in slide three is the, is the primary one that we're going after. Thank you, Tim. And then we do have the objectives and use cases that we've identified as well, um, which is the use case. So I, I guess that's the, right there. And if you go into the, the presentation. And so what we did is we started with objectives. And there you go. And this is what you're going to see in release three. Now, the interesting thing for ORAN integration is there's actually three groups that are that are really coming together to three open source organizations that are coming together to realize this, both the NEPIO, uh, ORAN, the ORAN software community, and OAI. And so we kind of had to split things up into uh, uh, those three areas, uh, where those three areas would contribute. Um, but we, we looked at the fact that we wanted to do these objectives for, for release three. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, going to realize uh, some, uh, some, some of these components, like we talked about FOCOM and IMS and those interfaces between them. We'll have point, uh, proof of concepts for that. Uh, and then we'll see deployments of ORAN and using the SMO. So we'll be able to deploy what 
I've seen release two, they don't use the SMO, but we want to use the SMO for at least one of them for release three. Uh, and then we'll talk about these other uh, deployment variants and uh, uh, or, or investigate in release three. Um, then we also have some requirements that we want to do. We want to provide uh, working group five with uh, some of the sur surface assurance. We're not doing necessarily service assurance uh, based stuff in release three. So we want to provide some requirements to them. And then there's a stretch goal of how we can realize some of the work that NEPIO is doing with the O1 uh, in, in future work. So that's the objectives for release three. Um, when you break that down uh, into use cases, uh, what you see is uh, you see greater uh, elements here that that we, we talked about what we're going to do with FOCOM. We're going to do O-Cloud registration and initialization. We're going to create and delete a cluster. The next one was uh, go ahead and deploy an O-RAN NF where we'll also instantiate the deployment and terminate it. And the next one is, next slide, is really talking about which deployments of the NFs. So we're going to deploy these various NFs from OSC. What you're going to see different than what's in release two is we're going to have the near real-time RIC with some XFs on top of that. We're also going to do a reconfiguration of the NF capacity. Um, and then we'll investigate again the O1 interface. And so if you go back to the main thing, what you'll find is you'll find user stories for all these. Oh, here. Uh, these, yeah, these are the these are the five, six user stories that are uh, that are going to be part of release three. We're going to create, delete the cluster. We're going to deploy it without an SMO. We're going to deploy it with an SMO. We're going to do registration of the O cloud, and then we're going to do the re reconfiguration. So all that drilled down into three use cases, and these are doing the user stories uh, based upon the template. So that's what we're going to be doing in December, is uh, actually filling out and agreeing to these uh, user stories. You, if you look at them, I think half of them uh, have been started, uh, uh, and then the other half have, have not. <laughs> there's some templates there that ones that haven't, and then there's some that have started already. So, But that's going to be our focus. And, um, in December. That's it. So Tim, all these oh. user stories on the list are actually the potential candidate for going into R3. And the RX planning group, in my my in my understanding, RX planning group will review the feasibility and potential possibility of including this in R3. But that's your recommendation for R3 from the for the working group side. Correct? From the working group side, yeah. That's what they, you know, after we had all the all the discussions, they said, yep, this was what we think makes sense for our Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Tim. I think that's that's great. The one thing that I'll maybe ask, if possible, is for the working group to, to, to prioritize these as they go into the future planning for R3, right? We, we need to ensure we I, understand. I think that should be a part of the template. If we are producing, if you're following the template, maybe on, on the template, there should be like a priority heading somewhere. Well, there is something about priority, <laughs> okay. but it's not clear. So I, it's high, medium. No, I, guess high, I, should, I, I, I guess yeah. I should just do one through six on these. High, yeah, that, one, that, that, would, yeah. <laughs> that, that would make uh, of, our life easier. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. front of I'll high, you could say two of six, one of six, or something like that. Yeah. 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 I'll talk to the guys about that. So, so what I'll but that's, say that's is... got to that's got to be a group decision. So, you know, the yeah. fact that you know these are they still have to be decided by the group, and I'll make sure they segment them into high, medium, low, and then high one, high two, high three. We'll do that work. Okay, okay that's Thank that's you. great. Thank you, Tim. Um, yeah, this is very well put. So, thank you. Okay, um, anything from the team here about ORAN, the architecture or the use cases? Any questions anyone has? All right, so moving on to working group three. So last time, oh no, uh, RX scope and user stories. So last time I was asking- Hey, should hey approve... Alexis, Alexis, I'm sorry. I, 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 is, is WIM on, do we know? Uh, I can't see. Hang yeah, on. I'm I, here. I, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Hey, hey, Wim. So uh, I think one of the things that the group doesn't know yet, 
you gave us a list of deliverables that you want to do by the end of January, but I don't know mm -hmm. what what template format or anything to, to put that into. Could you do me a favor? Could if you guys don't have that documented, that's great. But could you attend one of the uh, working group two ORAN uh, meetings and talk about what your ex expectations are for each of these, so the guys know uh, what they're looking forward to in uh, January. Yeah, my problem is the timing of the meeting, uh, to be honest, because okay. I have uh, a, I have a, a meeting that I need to attend at the same time uh, these days. So, so let's, a... <clears throat> we can take it offline, Wim, but I think, Kim, you're talking about these things, right? Yeah, those things there, right? So we said we provide network architecture or automation, these things, right? But I'm going to need someone from network automation to describe what their expectations are for these things. See, I think, yeah. I mean, if you look at a high level, right? So the first thing that you need to do is, okay, you have to segment it into deliverable components in my view, right? That, uh, that we need to, so for example, you say, I extend this component or I add this component, right? So that's the first thing. You need to come up with a data model most likely, right? Which is part of what I, I, at least my personal view is what we didn't do very well in R2, which we did most better in R1, is we defined our data model from day one, whereas in R2, we actually defined it uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> and so you see that, uh, I, so, so these type of things are important uh, because they everything is depending on it. So that's for me part of what I call architecture and and so on. So you have to basically segment uh, the the whole problem space into things that you are going to uh, that that you believe you need to do, and we have to discuss that uh, somehow between SIG two and SIG one. And that's yeah, so going to be the determining the scope and the effort and all of that stuff. Because right now, what you have, you have I think in my view, you have use cases. But the question is, uh, what is the amount of work needed to establish that and accomplish that? And do we have the people? And I, so we need to look at all of these aspects. Yeah, but so we, we provided for release two. I know that Seger provided you with a list of uh, uh, collateral you know, information you know, on the deployment architectures, components, and stuff like that. So I was oh, going to provide... Didn't, I, I, was, I think in R2, we, I from, we just created user stories, right? No, he had a uh, he had deployment architectures. Maybe, maybe you guys weren't aware of them. That would be that would be not good. But um, so all right. For R two, so you anyway. mean? Yeah, okay, for R two. Yeah, from from a Sig one point of view. Uh, coming from uh from from Seger's point of view, when he when he gave you some stuff, right? But so, so maybe yes, I can but, I can chime in, if I may briefly, that, that because what you're asking. Sig one, right? It didn't come from Sig one. No, no, it did not. But I don't think so. I don't think it did. But what you're asking, Tim, is really, you know, define the process for what's next when the user stories are defined. So I know it's yeah. a bit more than this. You, you want what? What do we need? Um, right now we have user story, but okay, what's next? And and, and what do we need to uh, enable Sig two? to properly make the prioritization into the task and so on. So, and I think that's part of that working group here. So uh, I don't think that's completely fleshed out. And um, okay. maybe I'm just going to copy paste this because we need to identify these aspects. Um, but, but I'm seeing this as part of a, a working group three deliverable. What is the process, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't care from, from a, from a working standpoint, I'm going to let you know though that, um, I would expect that the team will want to start developing whatever artifacts come up with or decide on uh, probably at the beginning of the year, right? We'll be done with our user stories for, for ORAN. We're, we're hopefully done with our user stories by the end of the summer. So I, what I wanted to do is make sure I was able to seed them with what their next set of deliverables would look like for uh, for the design, site, design stage, right? Okay. So I'm capturing something like this. Um, team, I might ping you. Wim, I might ping you guys. Uh, I'm going to take that action and, and, and I'll follow up. Yeah, and it looks like you got some hands up. So 
I guess I okay, generated, uh, sorry. generated some uh, comments, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, who's on the next? I'm not sure. Yeah, I was next. Yeah, uh, Sana. Okay, yeah, tall, well, and speaking, unmute, and then when you go, when you speak, then, of course, unmute yourself again, something with, um, with the echo there. So, uh, for the um, work group three, uh, I know that we are uh, discussing the uh, plannings for the next release at the moment, and that also cross-pollinating with some of the work that working group one is supposed to help with, which is falling behind. So some of the cross-pollination of the working group three efforts, uh, we'll sort that out as well. Um, Alexi, maybe that's a discussion that when we finalize the scope and the work, uh, mm -hmm. we, can, we can review that as well, the cross-pollination between the working groups. That was an action item on myself and Kaushik, which we thought this is an evolutionary process and we have to keep an eye on that as we are making more progress into this. So um, another big action item for the work group three is also the the time planning. Uh, when is the next release scheduled? And I know that's in your um, discussion at the bottom, um, um, Alexi, but I thought maybe let's discuss some of that right now as we are on the working group three uh, at the moment. So when is the next release planned? Uh, how soon can we establish the work group three? So the idea behind the work group three was an ad hoc group that would be created uh, in the in the release in the in the next release requirements discussion uh, with the combination of um, SIG architecture and SIG automation volunteers working together, who are going to re receive the inputs on all user stories from all working groups and then sit together and create a feasible recommendation to the SIG automation uh, who can then absorb that for the next release. So we have to work on the timing and we have to work backwards. Uh, maybe right now is the time to kick off these ad hoc meetings. And I'm not sure if I'm taking this time effectively, but when is the next release um, planned? By which time do we have to have the requirements firmed? So we need at least two weeks for this working group three ad hoc meetings to process the requirements and create some useful documentation for SIG automation to absorb for the next release. Um, that has to happen now. We are already in December. So I'm just trying to ask again. So Tal, if you can input into that or where anybody from SIG automation can help us be on track, that's something, on track, we, have. That's something we have. Well, yeah, maybe a little related to that, I'll add. Uh, by the way, I hope there's no echo right now. I changed microphones. Yes, is yes, is it better? Yes, yes, it's better. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I wanted to point out, you know, uh, what Tim was saying regarding resources starting to work in January and, you know, how much people would be able to work on it. Um, it's a very small point maybe, but l let's call this, please, you know, design for R3 plus <laughs> rather than just R3. I've been encouraging us generally to think of our release cadence uh, as uh, continuous. <laughs> Right, we, we'll be able to release an R3 well, whatever people will be able to work on, right? We have a lot of things on our plate and it really depends on volunteers and where people want to, to, uh, to contribute. Um, so we can't, you know, from SIG2's perspective, we can't uh, guarantee <laughs> that all the use cases will be available or fully fleshed out. Uh, some might be less than others. We'll have to prioritize right internally once we see all the use cases. Um, I think that would be okay, right? I, I, I hope it would be okay from uh, the work group's perspective too, that uh, it will be great to have designs and you know the designs can be iterated on and um, whether or not those all of those designs will make it to R3 really depends on our uh, availability. So I, I think just designing it with R3 plus in mind uh, could be a good idea. Um, and, and part of the reason for this is I think in SIG2 we've, both release one and release two have been kind of in crunch mode. <laughs> uh, it took us, by the time we start working, we already have to plan on ending the work, right? So we end up having like a, a three month window basically where we develop and uh, we had three months windows where we were kind of uh, cleaning things up and not working with a clear design in mind. So. I, I hope all of us can reach a, a better cadence moving forward um, and, um, you know, continuous uh, design and continuous development, right? And whatever makes it into the R3 timeline would be great. You know, we'll, we'll definitely do our best and uh, we'll work together on this. You know, once once we have the designs, we'll come back with 
uh, our plan of action to implement those designs as, as best we can. And um, yeah, that, that, that's how I see it. I wonder if, uh, if that works, okay. if that makes sense from your okay. perspective. Okay. So, so, at all, so, so this is my follow-up question now. I, I really like the continuous um, continuous mode rather than the waterfall that we have been traditionally following. And I do remember that the R2 planning was a nightmare. Uh, and if you recall those meetings, because we were under a crunch of time, we had lots of ideas. We did not know how to present those ideas in a format that would be consumable by SIG automation. And even after all those long discussions, uh, what we produced was not really the form uh, that could have been absorbed very well with SIG automation. And, uh, and we received a lot of feedback that the process requires significant amount of improvement. So now we are again at that stage where we have some ideas evolving. Uh, you saw the progress from working group two. Uh, we have a format in which we are producing the user stories. Um, I'm just wondering, would this be a good time to start the ad hoc meetings for the work group three and start uh, flushing out the user stories, no matter when is the next release, but at least have some of that discussion going now, or should that happen at a later stage? Um, I'm just trying to make a decision on this working group three meeting. Um, yeah, I, I think it can all be done in parallel. You know, there's there's no, nothing is blocking anything else. So it's really people's availability and energy. We do like a meeting, <laughs> do like yeah. a meeting, do like a meeting, every, do like a meeting every two weeks. Rather than in a firefighting mode of like every week, like every two weeks they review, they flush out the user stories prioritize them, put them in a short-term channel and longer-term bucket, and, and that, that work keeps on happening in a continuous mode rather than waiting for the next release and doing it closer to the release and then not doing it at all. Like, it's just a proposal. How should the cadence be working for this? Uh, I think it's a good idea, and we already have user stories available for SIG 1 as a whole to review, right? And we're going to get to working group 4 and 5. I think working group 2 is still working on its user stories, so I wouldn't necessarily review them like tomorrow as part of the working group three meeting. But there are already, I think, flushed out user stories that can be looked at. So, so I'm with you, Sana. We could we could we could start this. Um, start this, and we, we don't have to wait every two weeks, and let's keep it going. Like we don't have to do it in a waterfall way, like they, like Stahl mentioned, right? So we can continuously do it. Okay, so who needs to, who would like to attend, where do I, where do we send a poll, right? Because we need to, if it's another meeting, then we need to schedule it. So it's about uh, availability of people. Um, so we can just take the action to create a poll and we we'll go from there. People yeah. can input whatever so time works input for them. On the document, on the, or the work group three, let's get feedback. Has to be volunteers from SIG Automation and SIG Architecture, both like representation. Um, because that could be a joint decision. And let's gather the volunteers, the Lexi, on that same document, and then we can create the poll the way we have to create the other polls for, for the other two meetings. Okay, so <clears throat> so so to close up, what, what we'll do for that working group, um, sorry, three, yes. we'll go with the folks listed here, plus working group uh, seek two. So whoever is interested in helping refine the scope, for the release based on the user stories provided by SIG1, join that meeting and, and we'll, uh, put, put your name, sorry, here and, right. and we'll, uh, we'll get that schedule. Um, so Alex, I have a, a question or a remark in general, right? Uh, see, for me, the user stories is one element of it, right? What you typically see is that it needs to fit into a framework or an architecture, right? To be able to do something with them, right? And for me, the the thing that we didn't do in R2, see, I, I keep saying the same thing. In R1, we had a trial in November, right? Where we did a POC, basically. And that basically became an R2 an R1 architecture, right? That we delivered, right? And if you look to R2, it's basically an evolution of that. And we added uh, radio to it, to a certain extent, right? So you can have, let's say, 100 user stories, as long as you don't have the breakdown to what, to how it fits into that, into a framework, right? We can adapt the framework, right? The challenge is going, as long as you haven't done that, 
it's hard to do anything because we can discuss hundreds of use cases in that meeting. But as long as you don't have the mapping towards something like that, we can discuss forever, but we are not going to move forward in my view. So, so if I'm See hearing I'm you correctly, yeah, yeah, so, uh, most definitely I agree and I concur. We need an architecture. <laughs> that, that's what I'm hearing and I yes. couldn't agree more. Um, See, you have to so... decompose, so you have to decompose the user stories into uh, components, right? That you are going to work on. And in my view, that is the most important part that we are not doing. And that is the work that has to be done. And it can be a continuous effort, uh, not a problem. But that is going to determine what we will deliver and not. And that will also make sure that it becomes uh, consistent and coherent. So it, it's because you can do five user stories in parallel and they, be, they basically don't work together. I believe that I'm, I, that's not a good spend of our time. I rather do three and make them work together rather than do five and have them all independent. So... Uh, that's my personal view. No, I, and... But my comment is basically is, is we can discuss user storage forever as long as you don't have the, the mapping towards what we are going to deliver, we can discuss forever and it's not going to help a release. So who's or, owning uh, this? I mean, I, I need to, I understand what you're saying, women, we need to make progress on that, but we need someone to, to being able to take this forward, right? So, yes, so... because... Is this is this something that we would expect SIG two, or this is something we expect working group one in SIG one, or working group three? It has to be a combination. It has to be a combination uh, between SIG two and SIG one, in my view. Perfect. Um, Alexis, so, it brings me to the point of cross pollination between SIGs, and I believe that SIG, uh, the working group one, uh, should also have representation from the uh, SIG automation. Uh, because I remember uh, an exercise where I was presenting an architectural design in uh, the Nephew Summit. And I do remember that there were lots of contributions from both SIG Automation and SIG Architecture on that. So I think that's also a joint effort and, and that's also evolutionary in nature. It would constantly be evolving, uh, the architecture that we land onto. Uh, so I yeah. would ask for additional volunteers in working group one uh, to represent themselves because I think that would be a a good exercise for some of these cross pollination work to flush out yeah. there. Okay, but so I, I think so what, I have a path. I have of, a path forward. But one of the option, one of the options, uh, I think, Alexis, because we have a lot of meetings already <laughs> from my perspective, is to try to flush it out in the working group meetings, right? And you basically because at some point you have user story. I, yeah, yeah, that's what unless, I'm, yeah. That's, a, I, so that's the, exactly what I'm doing. A, it's a chicken and egg problem, right? So we have two two issues. On one hand, we want to have I see SIG one at some point. I so we are in this phase where okay, we want we know what we would like to have in R three, right? But then you want SIG one to already focus what is the next phase, right? So what is going to be R four and stuff like that. So you want but on I so there needs to be a transition phase in which you have to have a combination of SIG one and SIG two, and you have to discuss the let's say the building blocks, the architecture, the, a whole bunch of stuff, right? How it works together. And then once that is more or less clear, I think 6.2 is in the place to take it over and and uh, and, assemble, uh, and basically deliver the components to, let's say, deliver those use cases uh, and so on based on the architecture, right? So so that's kind of the process and, and that's an iteration we can do continuously, right? Yeah, so what, what I'm suggesting is um, let's take this as part of the working group three discussions, right? So we'll create something for it and we we'll discuss in there. That And I think we, we addressed pretty much what you said, Wim, and we start a discussion between the, 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 the teams. Is this uh, yeah. good with you? Okay. Um, yeah. I just want to, it, it, it's it's in line with what you were saying, Tim. Uh, yeah, the... Yeah, the only the only thing that I have is it's yet another meeting, <laughs> and I'm wondering whether you we can. Okay, yet uh, another meeting. Time. Yeah, that's my only. So let me discuss say, with Sana. Worry. Yeah. Because maybe we need to. We want to work group. Let, let's. Uh, I'll discuss with Sana and, and come up. Yeah, with, and uh, some, I I think we need to discuss it offline. Maybe maybe we can merge them or do something about it and yeah, yeah, efficiencies yeah. in so many meetings. Okay. 
so uh, we need to move a bit. So I'm going to declare the user story template approved, given it's been approved by being adopted every uh, everywhere. So so it's approved, right? Um, I mean, if there is any pushback, please. Uh, well, you should have come up before. So if there is any improvement that that you want to have on this um, template, um, please add comments in here, and and we can definitely improve the template. But given all the user stories have been defined using it, um, I think we can just mark it as a, a approved as a template. So please, anyone that comes up with user stories, uh, follow that template. I just wanted to keep that one. Um, that way it's uh, done. And we. I want to keep a couple of minutes towards the end for this. So uh, let's go to C, uh, sorry, working group four. Um, I think Sandeep, you came up with a bunch of uh, four user yeah. stories as part, as part of the, the, do you want to take us uh, high level through some of yeah, what yeah, you did here? Level. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'll take high level. Um, before that, I just want to have one clarification uh, from the SIG one uh, that uh, all the things, all the requirement or all the features which are going to be part of R3 are necessarily should have a user story. Is it true? Or can it, can it come and hop in, in later point of stage? Uh, Sandeep, um, sorry, uh, it, I mean, sorry. Can, can you repeat? Yeah, my question is that uh, I mean, whatever the user story or some sort of let's say there is some features which are going to be part of the R three, they must come via this user story, isn't it? Uh, that that's a little bit the idea, right? Because this right. user story will help us uh, draft the realist node. So, okay. um, so okay. so a little okay. bit, yeah. But it doesn't have. It's not. A, <laughs> I don't think there's a hard line, a hard line in the sand, okay. right? Okay, so uh, you know, we in R2, we started working on some observability uh, POC. So I think uh, as part of some, somewhere, some working group, we need to put that up to user study as well. So maybe I'll work with uh, your working group five or something, right? Fine. So. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, please do that. But uh, I, I recall um, Subhash did create a user stories as well, right? For. Um... Uh, well, I don't. I can't. I can't say exactly based on the name, but there, there is user. There are. There is a user story defined mm. by working group five. Please make sure to uh, to sync with uh, Subash as well. Okay, for observability, I'll put it on user story. Okay. Um, for user story five, we gen. Uh, we mostly work in the R two time, and all the meetings which we had was mainly dealing with the uh, Helm onboarding, uh, toolings as such uh, SDKs, right, and. Um, and kind of a user experience kind of thing, which we which we try to address in the working group four. So, few of the user story which I have put are related to the toolings, and few of them are related to the Helm charts and UIs as well. Right, whatever the UI enhancement which we could think about it to enhance the user experience is what I have tried to put there. And uh, overall, uh, there are uh, one of the SDKs. I mean, we we started with SDK meetings also in working group four. So I have put one official. Uh, um, user story for SDK to, you know, have onboarding Helm-based uh, uh, Helm based NFs, right? How is, because we uh, we have a lot of POCs in that, but I don't, there is an epic for that in R2, but I, uh, it is not going anything there. So I thought it's, it's better to put it officially here so that it can be taken to the next release. So that's what I have put there as a high level, SDK to onboard Helm-based uh, NF, existing Helm-based NF, which are, already in deployed mode, maybe kind of a brownfield, you can say that. So that's the one. Uh, second is also about the SDK. Uh, we we try to contribute in R2, but I thought it, it, it we don't have time. So I, I mean, what I'm what I have got information that it can be part of the R3 because we need more time to review that. So I thought it's better to put that officially here and so that people can review it and decide whether it can be part of a, it fits into the nephew or not fits into the issue nephew or is it is it required for the nephew and all those things can be discussed well before we start you know um, mm -hmm. putting effort on that so that's what i put my second uh, user story to generate i mean this is this is the same thing which we have pr for that generate the uh, operator uh, code from the existing helm charts so i thought it's better to put an officially here so that community can review it and decide on that before it actually gets pushed into the pushed into the, as part of the PR. So it's, it's better to have a review and 
kind of thing is what I thought, right? Now, uh, the third one is a uh, couple of, there are for the UI uh, thing, like for example, uh, a few UI based package creation wizard, with, which we thought that going to be uh, helpful. A KBD, a KBD package creation wizard, where we can actually uh, add a lot of uh, enhanced things, like for example, uh, capacities, dependencies, and intent, right? Uh, can be also added as uh, as part of the package creation wizard in the UI itself is is what we thought that could be helpful because many uh, in, we don't know what kind of intent is supported in 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 the current deployment whether the interfaces can be created or anything else can be done so if we thought that there is an automatic way to suggest in the UI that these are the intent is available as part of this deployment and user can select that during the package creation that could be great. That will be a little error prone, I mean, free of errors with it out because people can have blueprints from somewhere else, which we may not work in these deployments. So those kind of things we could avoid is what we thought. So I try to put those information as part of the third user story. And uh, the fifth user story, uh, sorry, fourth user story is about the status. Like for example, um, the status of NF, like when, once you deploy your uh, KPD, package it gets edited and you have actual nf right that's the ultimate goal so what are the status of it like and also is it i mean if you can show in the ui in a few ui that these are the nfs as part of these cap these packages right where there is a kind of a drop down or kind of expansion available for the users to see i mean these are the nfs these nfs has come as part of this package and also if you can show the some sort of a status in the ui itself for the each nf that it is working, it's not working, up, down, maybe some sort of a KPI information we can show in that, uh, in the UI for the each NF, that, I mean, that will obviously take help of observability in other framework. And that could also help from the UI point of view for users to see uh, how your KPTs, uh, how your NFs are working. So these are the kind of overall uh, user story which we try to fit in. And I request everyone to go through that and see how I mean, it, it's feasible or not feasible. I think I take, uh, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's also maybe when when I get a more feedback on that, I, I can I can work on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sandy. Um, any yeah. any question for Sandy? Team. Okay, so Sandy, as part of what we're going to come up with for working group three, we will definitely mm -hmm. review the user story. So question will arise. Mm. Um, thank you very much for the yeah. whole uh, working group four to put these thank things you. up and uh, and as we said, right, some of these things are we know are continuing from R two, and some of these things will continue in R four beyond. So, so let's keep that in mind as well as we're defining these user stories. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's take a um, couple of minutes to review. Oh no, we discussed last week. So, uh, working group five. Uh, do we have Subhash on the call? Yeah, hi, Alexis. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, do you have any updates? Uh, I know we discussed yes. last time about your user stories and that uh, you were yeah. starting the discussion on a data, on a model for service assurance. Uh, yes, Alexis. Uh, so these two updates are there uh, about that user story. So the template we have already filled. So we, we are trying to expose the uh, API. Uh, so that will correlate intent with the resources uh, and uh, the higher layer of service assurance system uh, could use it. Uh, uh, the Nephew's uh, service assurance uh, submodel, uh, it can expose uh, those functionality. And uh, we are uh, looking for uh, looking for the uh, a review and any feedback, if uh, someone could uh, review it and uh, give us the feedback and what other things are needed. So that we are looking. And the second part, but we are uh, looking, uh, looking around the um, uh, deeper technique uh, technical uh, di uh, discussion uh, that that is about the information uh, model uh, modeling of the service assurance so that uh, so that um, uh, what uh, what we are thinking here uh, that service assurance will affect the hydration uh, process uh, and finally the N um, C uh, CNF get deployed so so how uh, it will get affected like uh, how we are going to configure the observability how the action mechanism are going to be converted uh, based on the service assurance uh, uh, model, so that that uh, that those things or uh, those ideas we currently we are discussing in uh, discussing and trying to uh, make some document out of it. 
So yeah, uh, mainly these two uh, points we, we are discussing in our uh, work group. Okay, the goal is to document, sorry, the process or the information model. I, I missed that one. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, we have started with the model uh, so that uh, so that we can understand what things are actually required and how we could impact the process of the hydration uh, so that we can configure all the uh, nitty gritty or uh, all the things needed uh, to assure uh, assure the, uh, the assure the NF deployment and the uh, and the yeah service assurance of uh, NF so that we uh, we could assure. So those uh, details we, we are actually uh, doing it. So yeah, we are trying to okay. document everything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, um, Subash. Thank you. So yeah. any question at him for the working group five here? And and Subash, anything that you need from the SIG one beside uh, reviewing the user stories, but similar to what I just said to send it. This is gonna. We we need to flesh out a working group yeah. three to to get there. So so it's gonna happen. Not just uh, just be a bit patient as we figure out these aspects. But we're gonna have more of a formal review provided uh, as soon as we start working on this. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually needed the help from the work group four to uh, get the uh, more information on the modeling aspect, so that uh, we can. Uh, detail out the information model of uh, service assurance. But yeah, uh, still, if we, um, if we have started that discussion. Uh, maybe uh, we will feed back it to the work group form is what we think about the assurance, assurance model and, uh, 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 and uh, we can uh, think from there. So yeah, uh, we are working on okay. it. Subhash, uh, okay, I good. have a quick idea for you. When you are looking for feedback from another working group, um, yep. both the working group four and five have their scheduled meetings. Mm -hmm. What you could do is that you could invite work group four to your working group meetings and dedicate a full session to this joint discussion or or use their slot to go into their meeting and review the action items that you want to review together. I think that's way you can do the cross pollination and try to sort out some of the some of the questions that you have with that specific work group. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Just just a point here. I think yeah. as part of working group four, I mean Tal is taking care of the model, what I understand. Maybe we can help you on that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure, uh, yeah, sure, I'll just add. Yeah, mo modeling ends up being important uh, for Oran work yeah. as well. So I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I, I do have a draft. I'm working to make it as uh, comprehensive as possible as a start. So I, I, I believe it'll be done by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, we'll work, uh, work with you uh, on these aspects. Thank you. Thank you a lot, uh, Subash and Sandeep. Um, I just reshuffled a bit. Um, I haven't read your comment, uh, Varela, and I want to go there because it seems to be something we wanted to discuss here. I'm just reviewing it now. So I think one piece of your comment is really about if we are to reschedule this meeting, be uh, mindful about folks being in India. So yes, we can do that. And then yeah. the second one Alexi, is... I'll come back, I'll get back to her on the first comment and then we can iterate through the, the second comment as well. Uh, so I, I read that uh, whether I was waiting for the right time to be able to comment to your um, request. Okay. So do, do you mean that this time for the SIG, uh, SIG 1 meeting in general, or do you mean any of the working groups that you're interested in you want to participate, but the time is too late for you in India? Yeah, yeah, it's actually for... Um... Uh, you know, not just this meeting, but uh, for all. Um, the general timing now, you know, here is about 10.30 to 11.30. You know, currently it's 11.25. Uh, so it's better, you know, some sort of uh, things, uh, you know, a little bit early or the reverse way, right? Mornings for us. But I'm sure, you know, with Europe East, it's very difficult to find a slot. Uh, but if some better solution is possible, right, it'd be better, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll explain to you, um, but rather, I think when Kaushik was working very um, um, uh, closely with this working group, he was working from India, and the time slot that we could land on with the Western time zone uh, was something around 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and those were the only time slots we could work with. So now if you review all the working group calendars and even the nephew overall meeting calendars, 100% of our meetings or about 90% of the meetings are clustered in this early time zone for 
West Coast just because we wanted to accommodate the Indian time zone. So I think the, the challenge is the Western time zone and the Indian time zones because some Eastern somewhere falls in the middle. So me and Alexi, when we create the tall, we'll make sure that we consider that aspect. A lot of the people in the Western time zone have one hour blocked for their schools. I have received that feedback a lot. So we are even missing out on the eight to nine a.m. slot. But at the moment, if you see, uh, all the working group meetings are from eight to nine, just to uh, accommodate this um, uh, time difference, I think with the Indian time zone that we have at the moment uh, here. So it's kept in mind, uh, we, are, we are doing our best to accommodate a good time. And this discussion has happened in the DSC as well. And when the poll is created and then we receive these basically um, votes across a certain time stamp, it also um, shows the, the spread of how many people are actually participating from a specific time zone they're more from Western time zone, then I think that poll somehow gets accepted and that's how we, we, we land on those times. But we are not even creating a poll that would not match uh, working time for, uh, for, 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 for India time zone, right? So we'll definitely keep it in mind and you're just seeing that it's a struggle. It's an ongoing struggle to match the two time zones and, and find the best that works for everyone. Yes, yes, definitely. I understand that. Yeah, we have a very narrow time frame. Yeah. yeah. So okay, we do our so, best. We are creating new polls, and me and Alexi will keep it in mind uh, to be able to find the best time that we could find for uh, for for all of us to work. Right, right, definitely. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Varetta. Uh, I I have two minutes remaining, and uh, I don't know exactly what your second comment is about. It's it's um, it, it seems important. Um, right, right. I'll explain. Um, See, nephew uh, as such, right, has uh, many uh, important uh, constructs, you know, config as a data is completely new, you know, we know only configuration as protocol, <laughs> but here actually, as a data. sorry, excuse me, Varada, can I interrupt you a minute? Sure. So we have two minutes. I, I, where I was going is I'm not sure we can go through this now. <laughs> I didn't have time to finish my sentence because I think it requires a, a bit of a, you know, discussion. Right, right. And right. and so if you're okay, we're just going to take this for next week meeting. No and problem. That way we can take that and discuss it properly. No problem at all, Alex. Uh, I'll carry this over the agenda. It's, it's something which can wait. It's very important, but not very urgent. So we can see that. Well, I think this is part of the things we were discussing about architecture and, and various aspects. So we, I don't want to ignore it. That's why I, I, I put it there and, and we'll, we'll get back to it um, if that's okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. De definitely, definitely. The one thing I wanted to close on on process improvement um, is uh, my eagerness to create a board in Git for SIG1 to track actions. It's just the second time I'm running this meeting and actions are flying all over. And it's really difficult just for me to have a, a mental picture of what's going on. So hopefully everybody is fine if we create a board in GitHub to track these things. It's mostly going to be probably me and Sana working on that board, but um, it will might be a way as well for us to delegate. Um, uh, I, you know, I more. have a big yes for that, Alexi. Um, I'm very used to managing boards like that, and I think that's the only way my brain can also work. Me and Kaushik had discussed that at some stage, and I think we uh, we decided not to. But I I feel we should uh, again. We are the project managers of this particular um, all right group here, and we will be more effective that way. So I'll take the action of creating the board with Bala and I'll input the various actions in the board to, to get it. So so next week, it's going to be a bit uh, different. The experience, we'll, we'll use a little bit of the GDoc and, and the GitHub board. Right. I, I, I And I'll work with you, uh, Alexi. When we meet internally, uh, I'll review the yep. board discussion with you as well. Yeah, we'll work uh, these things uh, together. All right, so we're uh, one minute uh past the hour any closing comment but we're already late all right everyone thank you very much i think uh, Thanks, everyone back the agenda today <laughs> see you <laughs> next week and tal uh no worries we we are a welcoming community everything is contribution based so whatever contribution is good contribution thank you yeah bye for all Bye. Bye-bye.